How we doing today guys? Angry Irish Italian here. Today we got a Browning BAR, Belgium made in 30 odd six. Buddy of mine dropped this off because it's not cycling properly. Basically it's a single shot rifle and it should be semi-automatic. First thing we're gonna do is remove the scope. Now we're gonna get that out of the way. Next, you're gonna to wanna to clear the weapon, so pull the bolt back, check the chamber, and wanna check the magazine as well. Everything's clear, we're good to go. First thing you wanna do is take out the forend. All you're gonna need for this is a crescent wrench. So, gonna give it one nice hard knock, and then you should be able to just hand twist that right off. All right, and now once you got that off, it will not actually remove until you put the bolt all the way to the rear. And now it should just slide right off, like so. Next, you're gonna be removing the butt plate. And then you gotta remove the butt cross bolt. As you can see, this was actually made in April 25th, 1968. All right, now you have all the furniture off. We can get down to what the issue is. These have a lot of problems with not being cleaned in the piston, not moving freely, which make it a single shot rifle. This one, as you can see right here, when I actually took it apart, the regulator, the gas regulator to the piston wasn't actually screwed all the way on. So there was no way the gas pressure was going back into that and moving the bolt to cycle a new round. So that's probably gonna be our problem there, but we're still gonna clean it up and get it running as best as it can. So you're gonna wanna remove this regulator. There's a lock nut on there as well, washer I should say. You can actually see how dirty it is in there. Just caked. Next, we're gonna to wanna to make, uh, make sure there's free movement. So if you have hard resistance, you're gonna to have to make a die to pump it out the other way. As you can see, it's gonna come out to the right here. And the easiest way to do this is to actually just turn the rifle upside down and hit it hard on the muzzle. And just like that, she should fall out. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty. Now these rifles too, these early made ones, the actual cylinder in there is not chrome lined, so you can get rust in there. You can see how cake that is carbon. A lot of the time there's rust in there and that causes a lot of issues with movement as well. So next we're gonna open the magazine. All right, once we get that open, like so. Then we're gonna remove the lock bars for the bolt. Now we can remove the actual piston rod and immersion bar. Next we're gonna do the trigger group. So we're gonna open the magazine again. We're gonna take out the rest of the bars and the spacers first. Get those out of the way. As you can see here, the bar is attached and this is what moves the piston back and forth with the bolt. Okay, so now we're gonna put the trigger group on safe and just slide that right out. And as you can see how dirty that is, sand and whatnot in there. This probably hasn't been cleaned since the mid 80s. So um, we'll get that all cleaned up nice, but we're gonna do a function test. So you wanna make sure that that sear and that hammer are working fine. And there you go. And we'll try it one more time. And it looks good to go. Next, you'd want to remove the bolt. And to do that, you'd have to remove the bolt from the charger handle. We're not going to, but right there where I was showing you, you would lift up and it would separate. This is actually pretty clean, so we're gonna leave the bolt in the receiver and we'll be able to clean the magazine, the bolt face, and grease everything and lube everything up right in the receiver, save a step. And you're never gonna wanna remove this floor plate. I mean, you could in the magazine, it's just gonna be a hassle. I mean, you see, this is working fine. And we'll get that all cleaned up in there. Doesn't look too bad. And that's basically the Browning BAR stripped. 
So next we're gonna clean the parts. So you're gonna wanna clean all the bars, you wanna clean the rod, make sure you're cleaning the piston, the inertia bar, the regulator as well. So use whatever tools you like. I, I have a array that you use a toothbrush. I have outers here. Usually I use G96, but I don't have it on hand. We're gonna swab down the barrel as well. Uh, get that trigger group all clean and good to go. And then just give her a once over. Make sure that uh, gas piston is the cleanest thing on the gun because that's giving us the problem. Grease up the bolt. I have to use bearing grease myself on heavy caliber weapons, like a 30 odd six. Get that in there and all the rails. Magazine as well, hinges and make sure this is the most important part here. Now this rifle had a problem with rust here and you can see I cleaned most of the rust off with steel wool and oil already. Um, there's a few spots, luckily there's no pitting, but we're also gonna blue the gun before we put it back together. As you can see here, here's some surface rust here. So we'll get rid of all of this and we'll uh, heat up that metal and we'll use some cold blue on that and just give it some extra protection. And we'll make sure we get all the spots like the muzzle and any of the parts as well that need any re-bluing. And we're back, it's been several hours. This is the finished product now. It's all been re-blued, cleaned up, all the metal. You see there's a big difference. And it gives it that extra added protection as well as you know this is a nice hunting rifle so you want it to look nice as well and we got it all oiled in there all ready to go as you can see that turned out beautiful and all the parts as well everything turned out great see how clean and nice and oiled now that trigger group is Now it's time for reassembly. We have our inertial bar there. We're gonna take our op rod bar. We're gonna take our spring that's been nice and clean. And we're gonna put that back on. You can see we have the bearing grease on there to help it slide. You wanna take your piston and there's a groove there. So there's an actual little notch in there. You wanna make sure that goes in. And you wanna make sure it moves nice and free. So next we're gonna be putting the inertia bar onto the op rod bar, which would go right there to connect with the piston. So we'll have it upright to show you how it goes in and how it can't go in. Get that on there first. And as you can see, if you're gonna to try to do it here, it can only go one way. So you gotta make sure that the bar actually goes into the piston side first. You try to put the bar against the crossbar it won't work. And here it is installed. Now we're just gonna have to push forward and put that crossbar against its base, like so. And that's all there is to it. You can see that piston and make sure it free moves, like so. And now we can see well, it's all nice and clean in there and the regulator is gonna go on next. Now this was the main issue here. This was the reason why I wasn't cycling. We're gonna make sure that it's screwed on there with the lock washer and it's gonna go all the way down. You gotta make sure that piston is all the way in, otherwise it won't close. And we're gonna tight it as tight as it can go. You don't want any movement in there. You want that gas pressure to bounce back to cycle that bolt. And she should be good to go. Next, we're gonna put in the lock bars for the bolts and their inertial bar. So these go in first. And as you can see here, they lock right under the bolt, and that's what slides it. And then you're gonna put the spacers in right on top of them. Next, you're gonna to wanna to lock the bars on the inertia bar. And they're locked on like so. And everything should be good to go. Next, we're gonna put in the trigger group. So once that's all nice and rounded up that, you put it in the grooves and just slide it forward, as easy as that. And we'll go as far forward and those spacer bars will lock it. And then you should be able to put the magazine into lock. Like so. 
Once that's all the way up and you have that bar attached, you're gonna pull the bolt all the way to the rear and it will lock in with the sear bars. And you should be good to go. And that's all it is there. And that's basically the assembly there. Now we'll put the furniture back on. Start with the fore end. Again, make sure the bolt's still all the way back and you're gonna slip it on. You're gonna wanna put the rifle upright so you can slide it right down. And she should just slap on, like so. Next, you're going to want to insert the bolt. And you just start it by hand, and then you can use the crescent wrench to finish it off. And get that hand tight like that, and just finish her off with the wrench. And you're gonna wanna make sure it's nice and vertical to the barrel. Next, we're gonna put in the block bar for the buttstock. You're just gonna put it in like this first and then slide it back, like so. Once that's in there like that, and make sure to line up that bolt. With our big long screwdriver, we're gonna get that on there and then the butt plate. Make sure we get it nice and tight. All right, now the scope. So we're gonna put the crossbar on and we're gonna hand tighten it. And then you're gonna really wanna crank it down so that recoil does not knock it loose so you don't come off zero. Now, since the scope was removed, unfortunately, it is going to have to be re-zeroed by my buddy. Um, but I mean, I'm sure he's going to be happy having a working rifle. So it's a small price to pay. So we're going to really crank these down here. Let's get that last. You want to over-tighten them, but you want to tighten until you get no resistance. Next, we're going to do a function test. Bolt goes back fine. Trigger doesn't work with bolts back. We're gonna do a mag release to make sure that it can fire. And released. Put that bolt in, in the battery once it's closed and it should fire, like so. Now we have some 30 odd six snap caps and we're gonna do a function test with rounds. So we'll get those loaded in there. Two should be uh, good enough. Just wanna make sure it's cycling. And two. Get that closed up. And as you can see, it's chambered around. Give it a little help. That rounds in the chamber, as you can see there. And this tractor's working as well. And we'll eject one. And eject two. And this is the finished product, guys. This is the Browning BAR. And I'm pretty confident that we solved the issue. As you can see, it's looking pretty as can be. And I'm sure my buddy Jake will be happy with this. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.